Hi everyone, this is Randy Johnston with Mike's Master Classes. I'd like to share with you today a technique that um, a teacher that I had a long time ago in Miami at the University of Miami, a gentleman, a pianist named Vince Maggio showed, showed us and I think it's really valuable, um, especially on the guitar. And it's, I'm going to show you how to play through all of the changes uh, of any standard or any fast-moving jazz tune um, by just limiting the range to an octave, which is an octave um, on the guitar is, of course, this shape, or this shape, or this. So that's a very limited range. Now, that's 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 probably different than than a, a lot of things you've seen because one thing about the guitar is when you're looking at the fingerboard you're looking at this vast area and there's so many places to play um, all of the notes and um, that can lead you to to playing disconnected uh, melody lines you, you always the rap on guitarists when I was in jazz school was that the horn players and the pianists played um, much more connected, much more coherent solos than guitarists because guitarists were so concerned with playing arpeggios. So you get the guitar and and the guitar lends itself to positions and blocks of sound so that so that you you get things like this going on. <laughs> All that kind of stuff, like arpeggios up and down each chord. Uh, and another concept um, of, of this is that, that uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the guide tones. The guide tones, um, you probably have heard, heard about that, and, and there of the chords are the, the essential tones that sort of define the, the, the notes of the chord, that define the sound of the chord. So, the sound of the chord, the most, and, and people will say, oh, you hit the thirds and sevenths. You hit the third and seventh. And that's the guide tones. Now, what, what does that actually mean? Let's take a minute and look at that. Um, the most defining note of, of a chord, except for maybe the root, is, is the third of the chord. Because the third tells you whether the chord is a major chord or a minor chord, and that's the most basic difference between chords. If, if it's a major or a minor, and then it can be a dominant seventh or a flat nine or all kind of other things after that, but the most basic defining uh, part of a chord is the third. So in other words, that's the difference between a C major and a C minor. So in other words, if I'm playing a C, which is the root or the bass player is playing a C, and then I play an E flat, that tells you it sounds like a, a minor chord. If I play an E natural, now I've got a major sounding chord, and then the other the other parts of the chord, the sevenths and the nines and all that, are go on top of that, but that's the most basic defining uh, part of the chord. Now, uh, in a chords changes usually move in in cycles, uh, like let's say a two five, um, a two five or two five one, let's say in the key the key of C would be uh, D minor seventh. <laughs> to G seventh to C major seventh. Now what happens in this is that the we're on the D minor seventh, we're here, and our defining note is, is F. And now the next chord is a G7, the defining note is the third, that's, that's a B. And then when we go to the C, the defining note is an E, that's, that's E natural, that's the third. Now the seventh 
of the chord preceding it, in other words, the D minor 7 going to the G7, is, is, is a note that passes, that's motion passing from the, from the D minor 7 to the G7. So in other words, if I want to, if I want to, want to hit the, the, um, to really outline that 251, instead of playing an arpeggio or anything like that, I will play the third of the, I'm going to start off, and also bear in mind that this is destination oriented. Changes are destination oriented. That means that it matters just as much or more when you hit the defining note as which, what note that is. And, and, and so, so in other words, I'm going to, uh, here's my progression and I'm going to, um, I'm going to, to uh, go from uh, D minor seven for a, for a measure. Here's my here's my progression altogether. D minor seven for a bar, G seven for a bar, C major seven. Okay, here we go. Right there it is. So so now my first note of my D minor seven is going to be an F. So I'm going to hit, and that's my two five one right there. So basically, it's third, seven third, seven third, mm -hmm. right? So here, and you can hear the chord changes. Here's the chords again. Right. So here's my here's my line. My so my first note. Remember, of each chord is going to be the third of the chord. The seventh of the preceding chord is going to be the last note of the of the of. The, in other words, my last note on my D minor seven is going to be a C, which is going to pass down a half step into the third of the the G seven, which is B. And then my last note of my G seven is going to be F again, which is now the seventh of the of the um, the 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 uh, G seven, and that's going to pass down a half step into the third of the C major seventh. So here we go again. Now so here's here's my progression. Now so I'm going to go up to two five one third seventh third. Right, and now I can do. I can move the thirds around. I can change the octaves of one one of the notes or any of the other notes, or change the octave of the whole thing, and 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 get some variation just doing that. So here we go. Right now, um, I can to get to those thirds and sevenths. I can really play any notes. I could play arpeggios or scales, or I could even play chromatic things. It doesn't matter as much as it doesn't matter as much what the notes are as when they happen. So what I want is to have that third, seventh, third, seventh, third, and anything in between is is gravy. You can do whatever you want. Now here's I'm going to take my structure. And I'm going to to uh, uh, make a line on it. So so here we go. To make it a complete cycle, I did D minor seven to G seven to C major, and then to take me back to the D minor seven, I did an A seven, which is the 
is the 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 third of the um, if the A7 is the, the 5 of the D minor 7. So now that gives me a nice tight little line and I'm trying to do that with all with, within an octave. Um, or I can change the octave. Now, now when, when it comes to what um, my teacher showed me is when it comes to playing a whole tune, if you do that uh, if you try to try to do that um, with and limit your range to an octave, it, um, it it gives you basically one place to find each third of each chord, unless the the third happens to be the octave. In other words, unless the third, if you're going from F to F, and that's your octave for your for your for your uh, two five one six or two five one five of five. Then, um, then you, you you can you can play the the D minor seven the third of that uh, the F in, in two places the, the higher or the lower octave but everything else you have to find at one place so that makes makes your for, that does a few things that forces you first of all to think of not this huge thing uh, guitar neck but think more like like a pianist or more like a horn player where you can see everything all tightly knit together and um, and playing more melodic more connected melodies because you're not jumping around so much when you sing you don't usually hear huge intervals so um, so it gives you you're playing melodically and harmonically at the same time and um, and you, you are uh, Lim by limiting your range like this. So let me take, let's say, let me take my 251, uh, 2516 or 251A7, 5 five of, of, of 2, and limit my range to, um, to, to F to F. Right? Okay, so here we go. And now, remember, I'm going to, in between hitting those thirds, I play anything I want. I can play probably not too many arpeggios because it's a limited range, but I can play scale tones or chromatically. So here we go. One, two, three, four. So you can hear the changes, and you can hear, uh, and, and and it's limited in range. Now I could do this in any octave on the on the guitar. Let's let me try another one. Let's so. So we got. Uh, let's see. What should I do now? Uh, how about a lower one? How about C to C here? Here we go. One, two, three, four. change to do it in any octave and it's fun to practice it in in different octaves and and also this is going to force you to to use more space and you realize that you don't have to just play a run on line all the time you can leave some space the important thing is that you get to those destinations on time those those guide tones when the when the the chord changes and you're always going to hear the changes a good way to practice this would be to to record yourself playing a tune and playing a solo on the on the on the changes and then listen back to it and um, and and ask yourself two questions number one
Can I hear all the chord changes going by? And number two, is it swinging? Or maybe number one is, is it swinging? And number two, can you hear the chord changes? And let me know. I hope that helps you. And as usual, uh, look forward to next time. Thank you. Bye.